Hello and welcome back to another video. The rates of reactions which you need to know for IUCSE chemistry and after that we'll solve some relevant past paper questions that is going to really clear out the concepts for you. So let's start by what do you mean by rates of reaction? A rate, the rates basically mean how fast the reactants are turning into products. When you say a reaction has a high rate, that means it's it's uh, turning into products really fast. For example, let's find the, uh, the rate of this uh, process. Uh, for example, if you're getting 50 centimeter cube of gas, your, the product, in 10 seconds. So the rate would be volume divided by time. Remember, rate is always divided by time. So here the rate is going to be 5, um, five centimeter cube per second. Now let's say um, only 10 centimeter cube in 10 seconds. If you were asked to find the rate, the rate would be 10 divided by 10 equals to one centimeter cube per second so you can see here the rate is higher that means less time is taken for you to get a, a bigger amount of volume we don't say that the speed is high speed of a reaction is high we use the term rate rate of reaction is higher you can have different units for rate you can have gram per second there, there, uh, there are some examples okay you can have centimeter per second you can have mole per second notice all of them are divided by a second or divided by time you can even have minute okay but it's divided by time because it's rate for igcse you need to know these four factors these are going to affect your rate of reaction we'll go through them one by one but before that in order to explain these factors you need to um, know these terms so collision theory basically states that for a reaction to occur the particles must collide with sufficient energy in the correct orientation if they're just if two particles just collide they it's not um, a surety that they would react okay a, a collision is effective or we say an effective collision is a collision between reactants that actually forms products because they are hitting with energy that is greater than the activation energy what is activation energy it is basically the minimum energy for a reaction to occur now kinetic energy of the particles is the uh, particle is the energy of moving particles now let's see what happens when you're changing your factor what happens to the rate of reaction when you're changing the factor so the first one is temperature if you have two uh two two systems of reactions and in the first one you have a higher temperature now when temperature uh, is higher the, the particles will have greater kinetic energy and they will be more effective collision more effective collision that means the rate of reaction is higher so if you look at this graph uh, we have the time on the x-axis and on the y-axis we have the uh, volume or mass of the product you see um, if, if the temperature is higher the graph is steeper steeper um, that means the rate of reaction is higher to find the rate you can find the gradient the graph is steeper and then it flattens quickly all of the reactants have turned into product at a shorter period of time on the other hand if the temperature is lower the graph will be less steep and it will take a longer time for all the reactants to turn into product notice that you'll get the same final product it's only the rate of reaction which is different another factor is the concentration if you're considering solution is the concentration is going to be a factor if you're considering gases the pressure would be a factor so if the concentration is higher that means remember the formula for concentration is moles per volume if the concentration is higher that means uh, per unit volume you have a greater number of particles uh, so the uh, collisions will be more frequent and the rate will be higher if the pressure is high that means the particles are very close to each other and the, again the free, uh, the collisions would be more frequent and then rate of reaction would be higher look at this you have the same graph a steeper graph and it flattens more quickly if the pressure or concentration is higher volume of the final product is same for both of them uh, let's consider surface area surface area is for solids only surface area is basically the exposed surface area for example if you have a block of a solid of a calcium carbonate or if you have small chips of calcium carbonate um, this has more surface area this has more exposed area the um the other reactant can uh, hit it or collide with it from much more directions compared to this big block uh, when you have a greater surface area the rate of reaction would be higher as you can see here the final product would be same reaction is higher when the surface area is greater 
Now moving on, uh, catalyst. Catalyst is basically something that's added to a reaction. It does not react with the reactants, it only speeds up the reaction. It lowers the activation energy, so the rate of reaction becomes greater. Uh, remember, a catalyst is unchanged at the end of the reaction because it does not react with the products, with the reactants or the products. So you can see here, the rate is higher, but your final product is has the same volume. Now, there are different ways when you want to measure the rate of reaction. For example, if um, the gas volume is being produced, if you look at this reaction, calcium carbonate reacts with hydrochloric acid, you're getting calcium chloride and carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a gas. Now, for to measure this rate of reaction, let's say you decided that you're going to measure the uh, volume of gas produced. Set up your experiment, conical flask, and then uh, put a bunk here so it, uh, it does not go out the carbon dioxide um, and on the other side you can attach it to a gas syringe and then you will take uh, measurements after let's say every 15 seconds or 30 seconds what is the volume of carbon dioxide produced and then you can plot a graph okay and then now you can uh, change some variables to test for example you can change the surface area of calcium carbonate if you for example now you are using small chips and in another uh, reaction, you can use a big block of calcium, a big chunk of calcium carbonate. So the rate of reaction would be slower. The final product would be same when all the, uh, the calcium carbonate has reacted to hydrochloric acid. Now here, um, you can also change the concentration of hydrochloric acid. You can change the temperature. You can uh, test different variables. Now in these kind of experiments, there's also something known as excess. If calcium, if hydrochloric acid is in excess, that means all the calcium carbonate will disappear. Now you can also measure the mass loss. For example, if gas is escaping, put your digital balance, put a conical flask on it, allow both of them to react, note down the mass after every known amount of time. And then you can compare it with, for example, of a different concentration of hydrochloric acid with different temperature maybe or different surface area of calcium carbonate now um, if a reaction has a color change or precipitate formation you can uh, measure the time taken for the cross to disappear a white tile and you can mark x on it okay and then on top of it you will put your conical flask something like this uh, let's look at the example of this reaction you have sodium thiosulfate and hydrochloric acid you're getting sodium chloride sulfur dioxide water and, and then you're also getting sulfur which is a solid you get some precipitate right so after some time it will start getting cloudy you will not be able to see uh, that you have a cross okay so you will take the time taken for the cross to disappear Hydrochloric acid is added to excess calcium carbonate in two separate experiments. Two different concentrations of hydrochloric acid are used, okay? So the concentration of hydrochloric acid is different, but the temperature is same in both experiments. The graph shows the result of the volume of carbon dioxide given off over time. Volume of carbon dioxide given off. This is uh, the graph with higher concentration of hydrochloric acid, and this is a graph with a lower concentration of hydrochloric acid, 2 and 1. Which row is correct? Particles in a 2 mole decimeter cube compared to 1 mole. So you are looking at 2 mole. Is the collision rate higher? Yes, it is much higher because you can see the graph is steeper. Okay, so it's either A or B. What about collision energy? Now the collision energy changes with temperature. If the temperature is same, that means the collision energy did not change. And say it's A. Next, an experiment S is carried out to measure the volume of hydrogen produced when dilute uh, sulfuric acid is added to zinc. So H2SO4 plus zinc and you will get ZnSO4 zinc plus hydrogen gas. Now, they are measuring the volume of hydrogen gas produced. A second experiment is carried out using the same mass of zinc but under different conditions. Okay, so the mass of zinc is same, but there's a different condition, and you have to, let's identify what it, what could it be. Now, the first experiment was S, and it has a greater rate of reaction compared to T. What changes is in condition between S and T could give a curve T? So, the, the rate of reaction is smaller in curve T. In T, did you add a catalyst? No, we did not add a catalyst because the rate became slower, so it's either C or D. And the zinc is in large pieces, not powdered. 
um if the zinc is in large pieces that means the surface area is smaller so that's possible because if the surface area is smaller the rate could be lower so it's also c next magnesium is reacted with dilute acid the hydrogen gas is collected and its volume measured the results are shown on the graph you have volume of hydrogen that's produced and then you have time between which time was the reaction fastest remember the reaction is always fastest and the graph is steepest so you can see it's flat here here and over this time the graph is the most um most steepest so between two to three minutes this is three this is four between two to three minutes the rate is higher highest um, now we have a paper four question the rate of reaction between a metal and an acid can be investigated in the apparatus so you have zinc four and then hydrochloric acid and a gas syringe the volume of oxygen produced is shown here um the graph is steeper and then it flattens over time when is the rate of reaction highest that is when the graph is the most steepest and that is um when time equals to zero that's when the graph is the most steepest or in, you can say initially as well so just when my th method of increasing the rate of reaction using the same amounts of hydrogen peroxide and manganese oxide so uh, an easy way is to um, increase the temperature or you can also increase the surface area of the catalyst next um sodium chloride decomposes to form sodium chloride and oxygen getting sodium chloride and oxygen the rate of this reaction is very slow at room temperature provided the sodium chloride one is stored in a dark bottle to prevent exposure to light the rate of this decomposition can be studied here you're collecting the oxygen collected in this syringe sodium chloride is placed in a flask and 0.2 grams of copper oxide is added this catalyzes the decomposition of sodium chloride and the volume of oxygen collected is measured using the syringe every minute the results are plotted to give a graph of the time shown below explain why over time the graph of the slope or the slope of this graph decreases with time this is because the rate is decreasing why is the rate decreasing decreasing because the concentration of sodium chloride is reducing now um, cobalt oxide is more efficient catalyst for this reaction than copper oxide sketch on the grid the graph for the reaction catalyzed by cobalt to oxide all the other conditions were kept constant the graph would be steeper but the final volume would be same. That's it.